I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. I haven't been in the garage for about a week now. And it is such a different feeling when you do return back into the garage. At least for me. What is going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you guys have seen the last video, the last video I believe we did the rear suspension and brake overhaul on La Ponda. It is looking really good. It's just been sitting here on jack stands for the last week or so. We've just been waiting for a lot of parts to show up and a lot of it should be coming in tomorrow for the front suspension overhaul and one of the package for the rear stuff showed up but it's not the important thing. So I think today, just to steady making progress on La Ponda, I did order a muffler for La Ponda because if you guys have seen that video, I showed you guys that the exhaust on this car is uh, kind of broken to say the least and uh, the new stuff just showed up today. This right here is one of the uh, front suspension stuff. I believe this is the bellow for the tie rod, pretty much the boot, but this this is a very light box surprisingly but this should be the muffler i ordered for la Ponda. now i could have gotten this muffler from a local exhaust shop but everything has kind of gotten expensive now at the exhaust shop and because i own my own welding machine why not wait a minute what the hell is this Okay, so I went into my room, looked at the part that I ordered. This was the part that I ordered. I just failed to read the full description. So this exhaust uh, muffler is, it's still the same thing. It's just a different shape. It's a rounded shape in the description versus an oval shape, which was misleading by the link to the product. The picture is a oval shape muffler but the description is for a rounded. This muffler, I've seen it on EKs and EG stock form uh, before. I remember a very long time ago, my cousin Beaver had a white CRX with a D6 and Z6 swap, and he had a rounded muffler on his car. It looks funny from the back, but as long as it functions the same, I'm not gonna deal with uh, return shipping and all that and ordering the same one. It's 30 bucks, it's not gonna kill me. So I think I'm just gonna run it. Um, and I, I guess as long as it does its job, I mean, who, who really cares, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and open it. I'm gonna show you guys this fugly muffler before we get to installing it on La Ponda. Oh man, that thing is ugly, dude. <laughs> this is a muffler, guys, not a resonator, okay? So um, goes in through A and out through B. So hopefully um, this works out because the uh, curtain size muffler on the car now, the oval shape, it's much wider. So these are far apart. But with this one, because it's circle, it's rounded, it's actually closer. So I might be plus or minus with the piping, but we'll figure it out when we get it underneath the car. I believe this muffler is 18 with a 15 canister. Nope, it's a 19. Okay, 19. If I just eyeball here. Okay, well, this whole entire thing is about a 19 as well. So. It looks like I am going to. Okay, so it looks like I'm gonna have to cut um, a little bit of the muffler off. So I'm gonna have to cut it here in order to add on to the other exhaust to bring this further out. Boy, look at this. And it's crazy because La Ponda wasn't even loud at all with that broken. So if you listen to the inside though, this thing is long gone.
I cut off this end here. It's a little crooked, right? So when I take the exhaust muffler, A and B, he goes in through A, out through B. Flip it around and uh, this is offset, offset. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this muffler on the jack. I'm gonna jack it up slowly, very slowly. <laughs> That's how light it is. I, li I literally just palmed this thing. Um, anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and just get this line right here to be horizontal with the floor. And uh, because I cut this crooked, butting up the ends here, there's a gap there unless I fill it in, which I don't want to, and tilt it up, which I don't want to, to close that gap. So what I did was I cut off this piece off the old muffler, which is the next size up to use as a sleeve. So I'm gonna go ahead, so I'm gonna slide this in first. It's kind of hard with this pipe being all rusted out. Something like that. I don't know, something like that. And then I'm gonna slide this end, A, into that pipe, right? Kind of give it a butt up. So on this pipe right here, I cut before the weld to have that next size up to slip in like so. And holy crap, that thing sticks out super duper far. Hmm, okay, maybe, maybe I can flip the exhaust the other way. Right, something like that. Further in. Oh yeah, look at that. Perfect. It's dead centered. Okay, cool. So let me tinker with this. Get it as centered as I can. And then we'll weld it up. The car has like a weird little thump when I like hit the accelerator. And uh, if I just like ease into it, it it's super smooth. But um, car, really nice and quiet. Now it does have that little mini miniature rasp, right? If you really pay attention. But this car doesn't even have a resonator to begin with. Normally the raspiness is from not having a resonator. And there's some water over there. Okay, well, it looks like... I have a slight leakage right there. Not a big deal, I can, I can weld that up. But for the most part, no leaks. No leaks. Secured. La Ponda has a new muffler. Hell yeah, brother. Now I don't really have much plans for today other than the muffler install, but I was just looking inside the interior and I forgot that I bought new sun visors for the car that I haven't installed yet. So I think that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm debating on pulling the seat out so we can get this ready for, I guess, reupholster. But I wanna install the visors because LaPlanda's visors, yee, look at this thing, crusty. Sheesh. So simple enough, just a flathead, I think. Yeah, just a flathead. It's a Torx, but it also has a little slash in it for a regular flathead. So let's go and go ahead. Look at that. <sighs> Crusty dude. I'm an idiot. Work smarter, not harder.
damn pretty crusty now the only thing is that this interior is blue right all blue and stop lucy uh the visors are blue as well but the one that i got is gray now i'm not really i'm really not that nitpicky about color especially faded like if you really look at it it looks gray but it's just faded blue so i'm just gonna run these gray ones in i do have like black cargo cover black divider black quarter panels because that's what the car came with i don't know why it was black but had it been swapped out at one point in time right so hey oh z what are you doing she's always trying to jump in there every time i have a door open huh let me see let me see left right right left so this this is driver Honestly, with the visors up here, you can't even tell the color difference. You really can't. But, old, nasty, grimy visors out. Fresher, junker ones in. Oh, wow. I lost this a long time ago. And a curly fries. Well, you look at that. So this seat, I don't know if I spoke about it before. This seat is slanted um, backwards. So when I sit in the car, I'm leaning and it hurts my back. This, I don't know if this is bent or what, but I had to put spacers down here to kick it up. Even though it didn't kick it up enough, I'm hoping that switching out the um, back section here with the other one that Fred gave me is going to fix that. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Slide the inside in first, we'll wiggle the other one across, it's got this little plastic little spacer thing. And go ahead and put this first one on. A little tab right here. Be sure to not break that it hooks on first then you slide it down get that little screw back in there nice and snugged i'm not going to do the reupholstery in this video i just want this back piece on the bottom just so we can have the car drivable again while we make a different video on reupholstering the um, driver's side seat that tear over there. I got to watch more videos on how to go about it how to measure how to cut uh, How much to cut how much excess to cut I may do the reupholstery tomorrow or attempt to do it tomorrow because the second shipment of front suspension stuff Don't show up for another two days and the third shipment don't show up for another three days. So in between I may try it. I'm not in a rush to do it because the car still has a lot to get done before this car is like finalized and ready to go which I mean doesn't even make sense for me to put this top half on but just in case I finish it before I do the reupholstery I have a seat in the car so even if the seat comes back out tomorrow or in two days or whatever the case may be I'm gonna sit in this to see if the bracket itself was bent oh yeah 100% different 
Uh, yeah, so I guess when I do swap the original seats back in, I'm gonna use the bracketry on this back half because I sit pretty straight in the driver's side without, without all of the washers. You see it right there? So, yeah. Um, well, that's that's good that Fred didn't throw his back seat away because definitely gonna put it to use in this car. So one more thing before I wrap up today, this video is I wanna reroute my cable for the wagon. If you guys have seen the Mexico video just recently, I had issues going to third and fourth gear, which I've shown you guys inside the car. I've had this issue before that my cables are in a real tight bind, right? So my cable is coming out through the wiring harness hole, which is typically symmetrical to the other side if you're a left-hand drive, but you can see both my cables are coming out right here. And uh, right now it's a straight shot to the firewall, right? But if you go inside the car, it's literally doing a sharp 90 from the firewall and then a sharp 90 back into the shifter box. So what I need to do is I need to take it off and route it straight through the firewall, which you can't see it, but I'll show you guys. Straight through the firewall, do a light S curve to the transmission instead of the sharp 90 and then another sharp 90 and then obviously being right here on the passenger footwell. So this car is registered to race at race wars in august this month and that's going to be at sacramento raceway but i am going to be there for test and tune friday the day before because race wars is on saturday this time uh, i'm going to be there for test and tune to do all day racing dial the car in change fix whatever i need to do before racing at race wars but also because when you're at race wars um it's usually packed and you're probably gonna get like one qualifying and then, you know, the race. But even then, the race, one or two shots. So I'm going to test and tune on Friday to get as much runs as possible. So that way we can get this car to like, I don't know, go A to B or do a PB, whatever the case may be. Because I'm tired of this car not doing a solid pass on the track fully i say fully because every time i did went to the check this car either had no two-step or i had that sputtering issue or turbo wasn't spooling correctly or i broke axles i want to get this car to go down the track fully a to b 100 percent. i mentioned this before and i haven't really gotten started on it yet but i am doing the piston and rod setup for the wagon and I want to turn it up to, you know, 600, 650. And I'm in the market for a new turbo right now. Um, I've been debating with myself for a while to like liquidate a few things just so I can get some money to buy a really good turbo to make that power go efficiently. I know the stock K will do it, but because I'm running a GT 3076R, not the GTX. It does have a 106 back housing, dual ball bearing, but that turbo is only like 550 max. And I think if I had a bigger turbo with the same setup, with the same PSI it's on right now, it could make more. The car currently makes 407 to 70 at 13 pounds on pump gas. But I don't know. If I'm like itching for more power right now, I can always go E85. It already has a 450 in tank and I can go E85 and make more power the way it currently sits or put a new turbo on it and tune it then pump gas or new turbo E85 and touch 500 or just put a whole new turbo on it when I do the pits and the rod setup. So I've been in a dilemma with that for the last, I don't know, two years. <laughs> but I definitely do want to turn it up in this car. This car has not seen more than 420 in all of the K-Series turbo setup I've had in here. It's already on its third motor. Um, but I do, after taking this car out to Mexico the other night, I'm itching. I'm itching for more. <laughs> so I think I know why I routed the cable the way I did. Uh, I forgot that this car has all of the heater stuff back in, I guess just now and uh, I have the floor like um, heater vent in place so if you look in the center this is literally in the path of where the cable would have gone through but 
just looking at the bottom here, I do have a little gap that I can run the cable through. What the hell is this? I can run the cable through here and go to the firewall, which is this hole right here. Now, I do have a couple of cables going through there. I don't remember what they are. Looks like um, the fuel line is right here. Alternator. What is this guy? O2 sensor. And I don't know what that... Oh, that's the uh, starter power cable. So, there is a couple of cables already going through there. But hopefully, there's enough room for two more shift cables. So, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of snake them through. I did the right hand drive and all this crap under here like 2013 when I went right hand drive and it is such a mess especially because of having all of the heater core and stuff still in here Ugh. I mean I didn't know better back then anyways I just did what I could and what I knew oh man so I've been shoving and shoving and shoving and shoving and shoving. The cable does not go through the hole. Uh, the hole on the firewall side, on the engine bay side, is really tiny. <laughs> and um, because there's a lot of other things already going through that hole, it's there's just not enough room for one cable, yet alone two. So I routed it kind of differently. Still kind of in the bind, but not in the passenger footwell. So. I went underneath the vent right here that I showed you guys a second ago. And then instead of going straight through the firewall, it curves this way and then goes straight to the firewall and to the transmission. So it's already secured on the transmission, right? But the cable is shortened down as far as like exceeding over here to the passenger footwell. But it's still a very sharp 90 going from there to here. And then here to the firewall, the light, where's my light at? If you look straight down over there, that's my broken cable. Look at that. Broken because of the bind. Uh, can you guys see that? Let me see. Right there. Can you guys see that? That is literally broken shield on the cable. You see that? And I'm not happy about it. I do definitely want to get a different shifter cable and uh, figure out a solution going through the firewall to make it less bend later because right now i don't want to i don't want to take apart my wagon with the sun going down to make the hole bigger to run the cable through um but for right now i'm just going to go ahead and route the second cable the same path and just kind of wrap it up it is still kind of sketched to go into gear right really not liking how that feels look but um nothing i can do as far as running straight through the firewall right now what i need to do is convince my brother to do something with this car because it's been sitting since 2017 guys 2017 the year that i finished building this car it's unfortunate very unfortunate so I am going to wrap up the video right here, guys. Not much was done in today's video, but progress is better than no progress. La Panda has a new muffler installed, even though I ordered the wrong one. But it worked out in my favor anyway, so no more leakage on La Panda's exhaust system. We were able to pull out the driver's seat to exchange the top half to have the original seats ready for reupholstery. And we didn't really find a solution for the wagon shift cables, but we will take care of it in due time, hopefully for race wars. But you guys already know what it is. Progress is better than no progress. In the next couple of days, I'm going to have all the front suspension stuff for La Panda. So we're going to get back on track with that really soon. It's funny that it just rained like yesterday. And then today was like 91. And then the rest of the week is going to be somewhere between 85 and 90. So it's going to be kind of hot. And also the bugs are kind of out. Like I think I've been bitten like four or five times now. So I definitely do not want to fight them late into the night. Again, as I mentioned earlier, I want to turn up in the wagon with a new motor, with a new turbo setup. So I'm probably going to be in the market for some new things soon. The motor for the wagon is right there. I still need to tear that apart to figure out all that I need to buy to rebuild it. But that's going to come real soon, guys. So I am going to wrap up the video right here. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up. And if you guys want to get back on track with La Panda's rebuild, be sure to hit the subscribe button. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.